Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Cookman channel. I'm Dave and you're in my kitchen. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if it's your first time here, welcome aboard. Stick around. I hope you like it. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, right down below is the subscribe button. And uh, if you want to hit the notification bell, that way you will be the first one to know when I drop a new episode. We cooking in Brooklyn. That's what we do here. Tonight, I'm going to be preparing lamb chops with uh, Yukon gold potatoes and some sauteed spinach. Very simple dinner. Um, it's not going to be something that has a name. It's nothing fancy. Just a nice meal for um, weeknight or any night. Here we go. Let's deal with these potatoes first since they're probably going to take the longest to prepare and cook. Um, I got some Yukon Golds and um, really nice potato. They're what you call waxy. So they have a, um, my oven is preheating. Uh, they're waxy, so they have a nice um, consistency to them. So what I'm going to do here, and you see this, uh, this, the gold is in this yellow potato flesh outside of the, you know, the white potato that looks, of course, white and the red potato that looks white on the inside, but it's red on the outside, right? So there's uh, a few differences in potatoes, but um, what we're really gonna do is just get these cut up into um, smaller pieces so that um, they cook a little bit quicker. So what I'm doing, if you hadn't noticed, I'm, gonna, I'm cutting them in half, and then I'm just gonna run the knife along and make uh, these little half circle type shapes. When you slice things, at the same or or close to the same size, they tend to cook um, evenly. I can't give you a measurement of potatoes. It really depends on your family's level of greedy, hungry, and whether you want leftovers, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm cutting up a few potatoes so that we can have a nice pile of mashed potatoes on our plates. And then um, if tomorrow, um, somebody wants some mashed potatoes, they can certainly have a serving for lunch or a snack. Now, introducing to the stage, one of my favorite tools, the bench scraper. Get you one of these. It'll You can get this in a dollar store. Um, seriously, helps you to move the product around your kitchen, from the cutting board to the bowl. Clean stuff up easily and um, it's just cool to have and it keeps your knives sharp. How does it keep your knives sharp? Because you're not using your knife to scrape things up off of your board. One more thing to wash, but I think it's worth it when you, um, your knives are going to say it's worth it and then your time is going to say it's worth it because it's just easy to scoop up a whole bunch and, uh, and get it over with. So we're gonna walk these over to the stove and um, continue this process. I'm dumping these potatoes in cold water so that they cook evenly. And then also, while you're dumping them, it's much safer than to be doing this with a pot of boiling water. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of salt. And this is on a high heat. I'm gonna cover it and bring it to a boil. Let's deal with these lamb chops. So I got these frozen from the butcher today. Um, and I took the opportunity while defrosting them to actually brine them at the same time. Water, about two tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of sugar, white sugar or brown sugar, doesn't matter. Um, about a quarter cup of soy sauce, some garlic and some herbs, uh, rosemary and oregano that we're gonna probably use a little bit later as well. So this brine is done, done its business. I can always strain off the herbs and the garlic from here, which I probably will do because I don't like to waste it. Um, but the actual liquid has done its job. We don't need it anymore. Let's make a rub. Teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. 
I want the earthiness of some cumin. But cumin is super duper 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 strong. And it tends to it tends to come to the front and want to take over things. So this is um quarter teaspoon. Very light quarter teaspoon. I'm not even I'm not filling it and packing it. I just want a little of that earthy uh, cumin taste. I like um, warm seasonings and warm flavors with uh, with lamb. So I'm gonna go with the same amount of allspice, um, as we would call it, uh, pimento, ground pimento. Nice warm to complement the lamb, cut through some of the fatty uh, richness of it. And last but not least, a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder, granulated garlic rather, because I don't like powders. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Shire. Give it a little rub. And then what I'll do is just use the top to season the bottom. Use the top to season the bottom. Use the top to season the bottom. And then I'm going to pack these in nice and close so that when we sprinkle, we don't lose. Oh, look. I've got some fresh chopped rosemary, some chopped oregano. So we're just mixing the seasonings together and getting ready to give it a nice coating. A little fresh, a little dry. And just press that right in. Flip. And repeat. Time to start cooking our lamb chops. Our potatoes are about maybe three quarters of the way there. So by the time we get this done, we kind of meet up at the end. I'm going to put some olive oil in here. This is like a, a, a sauteing and uh, grilling olive oil. A nice couple glugs in there. Um, not the extra virgin because the, the smoke point is too low um, and the, the flavor is too aggressive. So you have uh, different types of olive oil. So normally for high heat, I would use like canola. I would use vegetable oil, but um, I like the flavor of olive oil with lamb. I'm going to give this a little pat. Um, Cause dry meat, helps with the uh, the formation of a crust, uh, caramelization, right? So, let's go. When you hear that sizzle, you know your pan is good and hot. Uh, right here, that's good. And you see this little fat cap here. I'm trying to get it as close to the edge of the pan as possible. That'll help cook it a little bit more. It kind of touches the edge a little bit. Last one. Get them a little room to breathe. And give them a little press because what the meat will tend to do is run away from the pan. You know, it, 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 it's still a muscle. It's still muscle, so it still reacts to the heat just like you would. You touch this, you're going to recoil. So the meat recoils a little bit when it's in contact with the pan, with the hot pan. So what you do is you give it a little bit of a, a press, you give it a little bit of help to stay. Uh, in contact with the pan. Remember when you used to fry bologna? How you used to make those domes? That's the meat running away. Looks like it's about time for that flip. Smell it. Get the smoke. And bam! That is gorgeous. Uh, well, this one went. Uh huh. Yeah. Now I'm going to start adding some aromatics. This is the rosemary and the oregano. that I grind the lamb chops with. Sprinkle some more right on top. I'm gonna drop a couple pieces of butter in the pan. And now I'm gonna uh, add some garlic. So I'm gonna sprinkle it around. I'm gonna stick this in this oven, it's at 350. And this will 
This will gently bring our lamb chops to done. The oven will help roast it from all around, finish it off really nicely, uh, roast the garlic, not burn it. Um, so we're just going to let it set it and forget it right now. Now for these chops, they're shoulder chops, which are different than um, the rack of lamb chops or um, a loin chop, um, which I would do definitely looking for medium rare, rare, medium rare, love it, quick sear and it's over. These shoulder chops, um, it's a working part of the animal, shoulder, you know, the movement, um, so it's a little tougher. So uh, a preparation like this where, where we slow it down a little bit and, you know, we get the sear, then we just let it kind of roast and break the meat down is the best way. And we can go, we can go medium on these. We can go medium, even medium well. It's, it's, it eats better like that for this particular cut of lamb. Okay, time to deal with these potatoes. Um, they've been doing their thing. They're nice and fork tender. Before it goes through, comes out with ease. No resistance. That means they are done. I'm going to take these over to the uh, to the sink and drain them. Mashed potatoes, super simple, super delicious. Um, I like to treat my mashed potatoes a little bit in the way that I treat pasta. When I drain it, I reserve some of the um, the starchy water that it was cooked in. I don't drain it all the way. I just leave some at the bottom because it's hot and it helps with the mixing and, and, and blending of the, of the flavors of the, of the potatoes and you know whatever we're adding. Um, I'm not shy about garlic and these hot potatoes are going to cook this garlic. So I'm just going to put a little pinch of garlic. I love garlic. I put that shit in everything. <laughs> um, we boil these potatoes with a little bit of salt. So let me um, let me get us a little taste. Mm. These Yukon Gold potatoes are so creamy with nothing, just boiled with nothing. You understand? Get those. And I'm leaving the skins on because they have a nice, delicate skin. A pinch of black pepper, because why not? And I have um, some warm milk. Now, it's warm because you don't want to shock your pot. You don't want to shock your ingredients. They're hot and nice. So let everything play together warm. I just stuck it in the microwave for a minute, and it's warm. And that's about a quarter of a cup. I'm going to start mashing now. One of the things about mashed potatoes is you don't want to mash too much because when you work them too much, they start to become gluey and you get like pasty potatoes and that's gross. This is a half a stick of butter, a pinch of salt. That ought to do it. It's mixed enough, it's mashed enough, and it should have good flavor. We got a pan heating up, and let's go with some olive oil. So we're sauteing some spinach, a touch of, of, of garlic. I'm gonna fry this garlic for about 30 seconds. That's till you start to really smell it, and then um, we start adding our spinach because um, you don't want this garlic to burn. So once you see your, your garlic is starting to get a little bit brown, get some part, get some party. Some party people in there. If you know spinach, you know this is one cup of spinach when this is all done. We have some leftover seasoning from the uh, from the lamp, so let's use that. Like I said, the whole bag of spinach is this, um, and I'm removing it to this cooler bowl because if it stays in this pan, it's gonna go down to even more nothing. So right before we eat. Hit it with the hot pan and serve it. Know what I mean, spinach is here. Um, potatoes are here. 
Lamb is here. We about ready to uh, manja manja. Manger. Eat. Nya. That's all I got. All done. Um, I took the liberty of plating up uh, in your absence. There's no uh, medium rare slicing reveal or anything because like I said, these chops are meant to be cooked a little bit more done. Um, so let me just give this a taste for you guys. Um, I like it. And a little bit for the side. Join me. Patience, my friends. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> this is great. Um, just what I wanted, just what I needed, and just what it's going to take to uh, to satisfy the family tonight. Um, I finished the potatoes with just a little bit of, um, of chives. Chives and, um, and mashed potatoes go so very well together. And if you don't have chives, you can always substitute with, um, with scallion green onions. You know, use what you have. If you don't, if you don't have Yukon gold potatoes, use another potato. Use a, a white potato. Use a red potato. If you don't have uh, lamb chops, use pork chops. I mean, do your thing. Do this thing. Do my thing. Do your thing. Um, do something. And as always, if you like this show, if you like what I've done here today, do it. Do it. And then tell me you did it. Shoot me a DM on IG, uh, the Cookland Channel. Shoot me an email. The Cooklin Channel at gmail.com. Show me pictures. Show me a little video. Tell me what you did the same. Tell me what you did different. Tell me about your your uh, your success or your failure. It doesn't matter. Tell me something. Be a part of this process. Participate. I love it. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. And I will see you guys next time. Dinner's ready. I'm going to eat mine. <laughs>